we have Heather from Practical Education Network. Chew and pour. Pass and forget. This is the phrase that Ghanaian students use to describe their schooling. Students chew information, repeating facts over and over again. Then they pour or vomit the facts out on the exam, which they try to pass, but then forget whatever they've learned. This is particularly a problem in STEM subjects. In Ghana, less than 10% of the junior high schools contain a single piece of laboratory equipment. And of the 500 plus STEM teachers we surveyed, less than 3% of them said that they had attended any relevant training with regards to this issue. There are about 70 million students in West Africa. The next Einstein could be one of them, but her STEM teacher lacks the materials and the techniques to unlock her potential. While I was a grad student at MIT in mechanical engineering, I began to ask, why can't the MIT style of resourceful hands-on learning apply in a context like this? So I set off to found the Practical Education Network. Penn is equipping Ghanaian STEM teachers to deploy hands-on activities using locally available materials. We've compiled hundreds and hundreds of activities that are made from simple, low-cost materials. Think balloons, kebab skewers, water bottles, flowers. And we've aligned these activities to the Ghanaian national curriculum, topic for topic. We train teachers on how to use these activities. We bring them together in person. They work in groups going through these activities so they feel for themselves the power of experiential learning. After the training, Penn monitors and supports the teachers through our gamified Android app, which teachers progress through unlocking incentives as they demonstrate that they're implementing these in their classroom. To scale the approach, Penn is broadcasting our training to teachers in geographically distributed locations. We do this through partnering with uh, an organization called Varki Foundation in Ghana, whose satellite infrastructure allows us to provide live two-way broadcasting of training from their studio in Accra. Schools pay for their teachers to attend, and as we monitor progress, we invite top performing teachers to en enroll their schools as micro-franchisees of Penn's content. This enables them to earn revenue as they provide Penn's training to others in their community. Over the last two and a half years, we've equipped 100 local level trainers who've reached 3,000 STEM teachers, and they've impacted more than half a million students with practical hands-on learning. We're measuring a 400% increase in frequency of use of practical activities in classrooms coming through our program. And after just a short two and a half month control trial, we've already measured increase in student enjoyment of science and an increase in their exam scores. We're looking to partner with anyone in the SOLVE community who shares our vision of seeing the practical teaching of STEM become the new normal on the African continent. Thank you. Go ahead, Andy, and then Thank you so much. Um, I'm curious on how you measure student enjoyment. What kind of questions are you asking? There's two things. We ask them, do you like science? Just straightforward. And then we also ask them, what are you planning to major in in high school? Because we're working with junior high schools, and in senior high, they pick a major, science, visual arts, business. So we also use that to inform their enjoyment of, of STEM. What's the biggest challenge to scaling this? So we have a lot of content. And as I said, we've aligned it to the curriculum. So we have so much information. The challenge is just getting to the teachers, um, kind of marketing to the various customers, whether it's the government or private schools, to get them on board. That's the main challenge for us, just getting the word out there, basically. Uh, Shereen. And how much time would you say it takes to sort of modify what you have already to fit other countries or other contexts? Yeah. So. For us, uh, our hope is that we can easily reach the West African Anglophone countries because they actually all fall under the same um, curriculum. So hopefully very minimal time for uh, Sierra Leone, Liberia, Nigeria, et cetera. Um, but really, the science topics that are in the Ghanaian curriculum are very similar to what you would see everywhere, acids and bases, force and pressure. So we hope that you know, these types of things we could, we could quickly modify to other curricula as well. Hi. Um, there, this seems like a very saturated space, especially in the areas that you're working in. There's a couple of people that, even within this, seem to be doing similar things. What is your approach to partnership and working with kind of locally um, based organizations as well, like homegrown um, organizations? Do you partner with existing organizations or do you have a vision to do so? Absolutely. That's worked really well for us, partnering with local NGOs who are already interacting with schools and teachers. But in Ghana and in West Africa, really, I don't see other STEM teacher training providers 
Maybe they're one-off programs, but I'm not seeing anyone looking to fully develop a practical STEM teacher. So we're happy to work with NGOs that already have um, relationships with schools and teachers. That's worked well for us. Hi. Please, can you explain how you think this model can be spread all over the world in different places? Which is the, the way? <laughs> sure. Um, I think if we were invited into Seoul, we would happily, you know, take in input from everyone to see how we can best refine our model. But the hope is that, you know, once the curriculum is set and we have model, we already have trainers. We have 100 trainers around Greater Accra in Ghana. So the hope is that we could set up a similar type of thing, you know, find some motivated people to become trainers and then kind of unleash them to deliver this type of curriculum in their area. Thank you so much.